Okay, rule number one. Objects in a table or graph that must be the same color must also be on the same background because color perception is relative. It depends on, it depends very heavily on um, what is around the color or surrounding the color. See this plot here? This plot has two series. You see the series? And how can you tell that the series are different? One says there and another says here, right? But they are they actually different? They look different, right? They aren't. They're using exactly the same shade of gray. What changed, what changed our perception? The background. Okay? Background is enormously important. Okay, another, sorry. Another example. <coughs> this thing gets full. Okay, you see the white color and the black color, right? You see it clearly? Is it really white? It looks white. Is it really black? It looks black. Now, look at it. Was it black? It was white. It was white. But the whiter part outside made it black. But it was white. <laughs> what color do you see this screen? It's white. You were, we are looking at, a, at that black dot expanded. <laughs> okay? It was white. Okay. There is color relativity. Color can change, actually. What color is this? White. White, but now you have to think whether it's white or not, right? <laughs> okay, I'm adding primary colors here. Are you still seeing the white color there? Yes. Sure? Are you sure? Or aren't you? It wasn't white. Actually, the triangle had a different shade. But the surrounding colors made it look white. All right? And uh, <coughs> it wasn't. Colors, rule number two, can be used to highlight an object. And if you want to use to highlight an object, you don't pay attention only to that object. You pay attention to the background. So basically, Often what you can do is to, to tone down the background. Rather than trying to get more color in your, in, your, in your foreground, just blend the background so it disappears. So you can see what's really important, the highlight, the Parisian. Rule number three, avoid using color if it's not necessary. In a presentation, it's okay. You will be using color because it's catchy. In a paper, do you need really to use color? Will ask yourself, will color add anything to my message? This plot here shows the H value of four sides. And this plot here shows the H value of all well, four sides. But it doesn't need any color. Right? At the same time, color can be used to highlight things. We could highlight the smallest side or the lowest value side by using a color, right? It looks good. But again, you might use techniques that don't need color at all. You can highlight that exactly in the same way, right? So use color if necessary. If not, simply don't use it. Rule number four, use different colors only when they correspond to, different, to differences of meaning in the data. This might look pretty or not. It's debatable. I, never, I would never use this combination of colors on black background, but I would use certainly this combination of colors in white background. But does it, is it giving us, is it telling us anything? Is it important to, this, to, to make the, the puffing red and the more blue? No, it is not. We want to see what is the difference in the size of the colonies. And one single color will not distract us. This is what I called before noise. The use of color here is introducing noise. And the information is better transmitted here. Because when you look at that, you're looking at the colors. Why the puffin is red? Why the gold is green? Whereas when you're looking here, you're looking at the difference in height, which is exactly what I want you to see. Right? Rule number five. 
There aren't too many, don't worry. <laughs> you subdued colors to, to display most information in bright colors to highlight the information that requires to be, to be, uh, st to st that requires to stand out. When you need attention, use brighter colors. For anything that doesn't require attention, save colors. Just duller things. It translates uh, as, that, as this, in, black, in even black background, use white or gray for text or for lines that you only need to refer to if you need to. And in white backgrounds, basically the same thing. Gray out, less important information, and darker important information. Brighten things in, on black backgrounds that, that require more attention, and darken things over white backgrounds that require more attention. An example of black uh, background. Do you see the lines here? No. They are not necessary, really. Okay. <coughs> this test text is gray. And the colors here are drawing you to attention. Well, they were designed, not very luckily, to resemble the, the corresponding country. But anyway, they were designed to be brighter, because it was the important information. White background. Can you tell immediately what are the important or the things that the important group I want to highlight? It's not very, very easy to see on a projection, but I wanted to highlight the right name of the whale. Rule number six when using colors to encode a sequential range of quantitative value, stick with a single U. Okay? Hue, sorry. Or a small set of hues. Don't overdo it. Don't use too many colors. A set of hues that goes from dark to bright, bright to dark, conveys the often conveys the information when there's a gradient that you want to show. And try to uh, use standard gradients. Hmm? Remember this? The shades are conveying the information towards this Saturday, May. May Saturdays are wonderful in Spain, which is where I wanted you to get, or to the middle of the week, right here. And there's only one shade of color in, in each case, one hue of color in, in each case, sorry. So choose a number of palettes and use them, and choose carefully those palettes according to what you want to convey. This is an example. This is a few palettes, and this three set of sub colors are exactly the same hue with different intensity. This is darker, medium, lighter, with different hues that are well balanced among each other. This is an ordered palette for green, and this is a diverging palette, which is a red, blue, when you want to show something that breaks up in the middle and goes in different ways. And some common ramps. <coughs> This ramp is very well recognized. Which ramp is this one? Do you recognize it? Red, yellow, green, rainbow. Hmm? That's the rainbow one, okay? And this palette is also very well known. Which one is this? Lindy? It's a hypsometric palette. Maps, heights, hmm? okay? This is the warm, cold palette. Hmm? Rule number seven. Non-data components of tables and graphs should be displayed just visibly enough so as to perform the role, but no more so. You display what you need to display, but don't overdo it. For instance, axis lines, do you need them? Normally not, unless you are digitizing things, so thing gray. Borders, do you, need, do you actually need borders? Hmm? Quite often you don't. You can avoid them or think green again. Background, never use a confusing background. It's the best way to completely destroy a, a, a plot. Bars, be persistent, one hue per series. Lines, tend to make thick lines if possible, unless you need to go exactly to that point which requires thin lines. Dots, tend to make them large in color. Simple plot, lines are avoided except for the ones that you need to, 
for scale reference, only two series, two colors. With dots, remember that small dots cannot be easily seen. So can you see which color is this one? Or this one? Quite often you don't, so it's better to use larger dots that are easy to distinguish. And if you can stand the uncertainty of this dot, so much better. Remember that you, can, you could do easily this by using different symbols that you can recognize, triangles, squares, etc. So you don't really need colors, although they are convenient. Rule number eight, avoid ugly things. Avoid using combinations that could not be seen by colorblind people and try to avoid clashes. This is the most offending and the worst offending class ever in plots. Green, red. It's used as a test in the, in the optical clinics to see whether you are myopic or hypermetric. Hyper, hypermetric right? But they blend so horridly. If you need to use them, put a separator, such as a green red gradient is a divergent gradient. So you basically used to <coughs> explain things that go one way, one direction, another way, another direction. Okay, put some separator. This is the neutral, the, the, the mean. Use a white or something like that to separate them. And finally, rule, no, rule nine, please, by all means, by all means, avoid fancy things. Avoid using visual effects in any plot that will go on paper. So you will never publish this. This paper goes to my, in, in review, to my, uh, to my desk. I won't read it, period. No matter what it says, it might be the best discovery in the 20th century. I won't read it, okay? <laughs> Keep it simple, please. Final suggestions. You can substitute colors often, but not always, all right? Colors might, be, might need to be reproduced in suboptimal systems, such as photocopies, although they are disappearing quickly. <coughs> Many publishers won't use colors. They will require you to use black and white. So try to think whether something can be done, well done, in black and white. And anticipate, just in case, how a color will render in gray space. Make a copy of your plots, of your color plot, uh, uh, desaturate it to the minimum so it, it's gray and see how it looks. Does it look like right? Okay, go. Consider using patterns if necessary, although they are also becoming out of, of the game increasingly. And remember that gray scales might be difficult to scan and reproduce. For color maps, this tool here is very useful. I suggest you to experiment with it. It will show you a test map and will offer you a series of palettes and then it will also tell you whether this particular combination renders well for colorblind people or renders well in a photocopy or renders well on projected or on an LCD screen so you can test whether this color ramp is useful for you. Okay? It's very, 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 very useful. Hello? Uh, uh, what else? And the small things having big effects. Hmm? Sometimes remember that a color is not on its own. It's also affected by the surroundings. Look at whether you need to outline a plot. It will change things dramatically. Okay? How do you put together two colors? Will be completely different if there is a line in between. They will look absolutely different. Try to experiment by putting white and black lines around, around things. They will change how you perceive the colors. Experiment with palettes and compare. Just compare. Put one rendering along, uh, alongside another rendering and see which one looks better. If in doubt, just ask. You might not be the best person in the world at seeing colors. Ask your colleague. Hey, does it look right to you? No, it's ugly. Back to the bench. Does it like, oh, that's gorgeous. Okay. Seek a third opinion, just in case your company is trying to, to fish for compliments or something like that. That's it. YMC? Young Men's Christian Association, I think. Oh, CMI, CMYK. It's a system of colors. 
Okay, there are two main two main color systems. <laughs> there are two. The two main color systems are RGB, which means red, green, and blue, and SMYK, which is cyan. Sorry, magenta yellow and this stands for black so as not to be confused with blue okay this is the color system that works by reflecting when you see this green this red here we see this red because it has absorbed the cyan well it has absorbed let's say that it has absorbed the blue and the green okay so it only reflects the red so this cyan magenta yellow uh, black works because if you use those tints that have selective reflection, the combination of those tints, the ref combination of the reflections on those tints will render the primary colors, the primary RGB colors, the red, the green, the blue, etc. So basically, your computer system and your computer screen will be always an RGB because this works by adding colors. And this works by subtracting colors. So this is used on papers. On paper, you use this system. In the computer screen, you use RGB. And the problem is that you have to translate from what you see on RGB space into what you will see once printed on SMYK 1K space. You need to translate that. This is used, this is done by color profiles. If you are using uh, uh, GIMP or Photoshop or whatever image processing analysis, you will always see something that they call they say that they call the uh, monitor profile or color profile that we tend to, to ignore completely. This color profile that is there is the translation between what the screen can show, what your eye can see, and what will result in a printed, uh, in a printed page. So the color profiles are really actually very important, although they have been, they have been often chosen so carefully by the manufacturers that you normally don't need to care much about that, but still they are there. 